Hello everyone, I'm back from Florida. However, I still have to resort to uploading some pre-recorded videos just because I need to get them out in the first place. I have had these recorded for almost an entire year at this point, so it's about time that I get them out. But I just want to give a heads up. Whenever I was recording these videos, I believed that the book was going to be out before the channel. That has actually not been the case. So if I say in these videos that my book is out, please buy it now. I have not actually released that book yet. So no, it's projected to be out by March 1st, maybe a little after that, but by March 1st is what we're aiming for. So that being said, let's get right into the video. Hello everyone, we are back again with another Another critique video. An interesting one today. We're actually doing a critique video on Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh is a conservative influencer and talk show host, you could say, on The Daily Wire. Now, I actually am subscribed to Matt. The thing is, though, is that just because you're subscribed to someone or you follow someone it doesn't mean that they can't be wrong. And in fact, that was born out with the video that he posted mm, six days ago entitled, Is Food Addiction Real or Not? If you've watched this channel long enough you know that it is real it's very real but i can't get into too much detail right now because we're going to get into it in the meat and potatoes of the video so let's go ahead and waste no time of course there's an ad right in the beginning so i'll cut that out but anyway let's get going as you guys should know by now, no supplements need to be taken on a carnivore diet as you can derive everything you need from such a diet. However, this does not mean that there aren't certain nutraceuticals that can be taken to further ameliorate inflammation and subsequently any illness, disorder, and or disease someone may be plagued with. One of the best products on the market, if not the best product, in doing such a thing is the flagship product to a company known as Cerule, known as Stem Enhance Ultra, which effectuates the release of one's own inherent stem cells from their bone marrow. When this occurs, this results in what may be perceived by some to be the epitome of regeneration. Now, I cannot under any circumstances claim any cause and effect relationships from this product and any heart health outcome. However, one may speculate what they wish with this information. If you want to know more about this product or are interested in buying this product, as well as many others from the Cerule Company, refer to the link on the screen now or the description below. The New York Post this week reports some major breaking news. You are basically a crackhead, and so am I, it would seem. It turns out that if you really enjoy eating potato chips, and if you struggle to stick to the serving size and the nutrition label, then you are an addict. In many cases, that is the case, because potato chips and most of the things that come in a package are laden with seed oils and carbohydrates. Seed oils actually react with the cannabinoid receptors of the brain to either increase or decrease appetite depending on who you are as a person. Carbohydrates are the absolute addictive substance that we're talking about. Carbohydrates are seven to eight times more addictive than cocaine, or rather more dopaminergic than cocaine. Those aren't synonymous, so I have to be careful with that. So anyway, yes, yes, you're most likely addicted to some level or another. You might as well be shooting up heroin, according to... That is a straw man. The dopaminergic effects of foods like potato chips and Oreos, let's say, are just as comparable as the dopaminergic effects of cocaine and possibly heroin. I'm saying possibly because I don't really know about heroin. The New York Post reports uh, the news with this headline, quote, Ice cream and potato chips are just as addictive as cocaine or heroin. No, in fact, they're more dopaminergic than cocaine and potentially heroin. The headline also has it wrong to be sensational, not necessarily as addictive. That depends on who you are as a person. That's according to research. Research says that. Yeah, research isn't research usually. It's vapid research, like I just said. They do not establish cause and effect because it cannot establish cause and effect in human beings. In order to establish a cause and effect relationship between a heart health outcome as that relates to some dietary or lifestyle intervention, intervention in human beings over any given period of time. You have to take two genetically identical twins, phenotypically and genotypically identical, separate them at birth, put them into two metabolic ward lock-in rooms, watch them over their entire lives, observe them over their entire lives if you're trying to infer lifelong health outcomes, 40 years for 40 year long health outcomes, etc., and control for every single variable including the time they wake up, the time they go to bed, their stress levels, their hormone levels, what shoe they put on first in the morning. It's expensive, it's implausible, it's not practical at all. Also not to mention the fact that it's unethical. It wouldn't get passed an ethics committee. More than one in 10 people are hooked. A new analysis of 200. Uh, yeah, more than one in 10. Of, I mean, that's setting the bar pretty low. I mean, that's like saying George Washington was president over 10 years ago. And biscuits, soft drinks, sugary cereals have previously been linked to cognitive decline. Linked is typically a cause and effect term, so no, they have not been linked to. They've been purported to be linked to those diseases and those deleterious presentations and etiologies. Quote, the combination of refined carbohydrates and fats often found in UPFs 
seems to have a supra, uh, supra additive effect on brain reward systems. Yes. Did you ever think about the fact that they do that on purpose to increase sales, Matt? either macronutrient alone, which may increase the addictive potential of these foods. Gerhard and the study's authors wrote in their new findings published in the BMJ. Yes, it is far easier to eat excessive amounts of saturated fat if you combine them with carbohydrates because of the hormonal responses that are effectuated within the body as a result of that consumption and introduction into the body, as well as the preceding effects on your brain chemistry. So then told that scientists want a cigarette-style warning label on processed food, cautioning the poor, addicted, helpless consumer that the ice cream he's buying is unhealthy and won't help him achieve his weight loss goals. This is, of course, why our streets are riddled with homeless bun bums whose lives have been destroyed because of their junk food addiction. Matt, our streets aren't riddled with those people. Our hospitals are. Our clinics are. Our doctor's offices are. Did you ever think about the fact that the reason that we don't see them on the streets is because this type of stuff is legal for human purchase and consumption and therefore is cheaper? Did you ever think about the fact that the majority of people are not addicted to cocaine and heroin because we know that it is a drug, but the reason that many people aren't aware of the fact that everyone, almost everyone, across the Western world and some of the Eastern world is addicted to these foods that you were speaking upon and that were previously alluded to is because of the fact that they are so common, they're so regularly encountered, and are not discouraged by mainstream health institutions. Did you ever think about that, Matt? You're better than this. I know you are. I watch a show. And it doesn't help that we're told that carbohydrates are a necessary nutrient. They're not only unnecessary, they're actually contraindicated in the extreme. They are toxic to the human physiological system, even in a gram, even if that gram of exogenous carbohydrate is pretty negligible in terms of the damage that it induces. You know the stories. You know, first a guy buys a pack of Oreos and next thing you know, he's robbing a Cold Stone Creamery. This is a reach, and I feel like he knows this. This is an extreme reach. I just explained it. Oreos are not illegal, and they're also cheap, and the toxic effects of carbohydrates are far more pernicious and insidious than the toxic physiological effects of cocaine and heroin are. Stealing the ice cream, not the cash. This person, in his inappropriate analogy, his fallacious analogy here, wouldn't rob a store for ice cream is because the next day when it opens, he can buy it for two bucks food withdrawal can be so severe. You know, Carbohydrate withdrawal is a thing. It's called the keto flu. Have you ever heard of it? What we colloquially think of when people say food withdrawal should be carbohydrate withdrawal because that's the drug concerned, Matt. The drug, that is not a metaphor. That is not hyperbole. I mean that literally. I would suggest to you that you stay off this topic because you clearly patently, demonstrably do not understand what you're talking about. You do not understand what equivalent parallels to draw here when it comes to this issue. You don't. Made up addictions that these uh, these days, but none of them are as absurd as food addiction. Wow. So all of the other fake pseudo faux addictions that he's referring to, which actually are faux pseudo addictions, are somehow more absurd than an actual addiction, which is carbohydrate addiction. Shame on you, Matt. And I looked at the comments on here, and we can scroll through some of them here. Listen, I'm conservative. I'm as screw the snowflake crap as any of us. Food addiction is real. It may not be a physical addiction like cigarettes or alcohol. Actually, in many cases it is. But it is absolutely more complicated than have some willpower. That being said, it's Really does require putting your balls to the wall and not backing down to overcome it just like any addiction basically exactly what i'm saying it's really important to convey the fact that sugar itself is an addiction it is a drug it is a drug in the absolute literal sense i wrote about this in my book contraindicated actually please buy that now the link is in the description below i talk about it extensively there's an entire section where sugar is a drug it follows the addiction model to a t when you consume it it spikes your dopamine seven to eight times more than cocaine does i've already alluded to that multiple times repeatedly but on top of that 
then it gives you this spike of energy. You feel this rush and you're ready to go. And then it's proceeded very quickly by a precipitous decrease and decline in energy, which results in dizziness. It results in extreme appetite for more. It results in sometimes cold sweats and shaking, depending on how addicted you are to the substance. And then you have to eat more, which is the entire reason why we're told to eat three meals a day with snacks in between to keep your blood sugar steady. Yeah, because in order to keep them steady, if you're eating a an exorbitant level, an excessive level of carbohydrates, excessive meaning anything more than zero, in the majority of people, you have to actually steady them by eating more, okay? Because it results in a crash, spike and dip, spike and dip phenomenon. It also leads to early death. It damages the body physiologically. Do I need to give the talk, Matt? Should I, should I give the talk to you? Let, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that. Exogenous carbohydrates destroy lipid rafts, tear cell membranes to pieces, bind to DNA, and promote carcinogenesis by causing mutations to it, and in a high enough concentration, but still relatively low, kill cells outright. If you didn't know that, well, now you do. I'm just going to tell you right now, food addiction is not a thing. Yes, it is. We've covered it. Shameful. Shameful. And luckily, your comments on this post exemplify that and, and reciprocate my message to you. How do they know that food is addictive? I mean, how do they distinguish someone who eats food ubiquitously isn't addictive? There are things that other people, again, colloquially deem as food, which isn't food. Okay, sugar. Sugar is a drug. It should be utilized as such and conceptualized as such. Well, there seem to be two reasons typically given. And the first is the bit about reward systems in the brain. An article in... Yes, Matt. There you go. People with food addiction get their fix by eating a particular food until their brain has received all the dopamine it was missing. There you go. That's correct. There's more to why sugar is addictive, though. It's not simply a dopaminergic response that makes it addictive. I just explained why. Your brain is supposed to have a positive chemical response to food. Yes, but sugar, carbohydrates, induce a dopaminergic response greater than actual indicated foods for human physiology. Seven to eight times more than cocaine. Simply having a dopaminergic response that's quite high relatively to other things that stimulate a dopamine response in the brain is not what makes it bad or contraindicated. If it already is damaging to human physiology in many other ways that I've already explained and elucidated though, the fact that it is dopaminergic to that degree makes it worse. Junk food has lots of fat and sugar, which are things that your body needs and craves. No, false. Your body does not require exogenous carbohydrates. It requires exogenous fat of the indicated appropriate kind for physiology, that being saturated fat, straight hydrocarbon chains, the stuff solid at room temperature, butter, tallow, lard, suet, ghee, all of that. To false, it does not require sugar. Your body creates all of the sugar it needs endogenously via a process called gluconeogenesis in the liver, typically from the glycerol backbones of odd chain fatty acids and also 50% of the amino acids acids that exist are gluconeogenic when necessary to be oxidized for that purpose. They're all processed or ultra processed apparently. Ultra processed. Actually, don't say apparently like that's not different from processed. Every single food on the face of the planet is processed if it's in a package like ground beef. Every single food is processed. Every single one. It has to be. What we're talking about is ultra processed, but also fruit that isn't ultra processed is also addictive. Okay, we don't need a we don't need 300 studies into it. Why do people why do people like to eat potato chips? I can't understand it. You're right. We don't need those because we've already done the very basic ones that establish why people are addicted to carbohydrates. We know the biochemistry. Moving on. Why do they eat? Why, why do people eat chocolate chip cookies? Cover that. Why do people like to eat cake? Cover that. Because it tastes good. That's why they eat it. That's it. That's the only reason. Sure. The reason why people say it tastes good is because of the dopaminergic responses that one has induced as a result of the consumption of that food. But we've already covered that sugar is more dopaminergic than other actual indicated foods for human physiology, like meat and saturated fat, which makes this incomparable. This is the essential reason why people do every bad or unhealthy thing that people do. They do it because it gives them pleasure. They do it because of the brain's reward. This is reductionism. This is absolute reductionism because what you've done now is you've manipulated the argument and reduced it to such a degree that you have to, whenever you hear it, agree with it because it is just an absolute fact. What he just said was an absolute fact because he reduced the argument to such a vague conviction. That's what you've done, Matt. If you've watched my videos long enough or if you've read my book, you'll know how important it is to ground electrically to the earth. However, I am, of course, aware of the fact that this is important 
impractical for many people, whether it be due to work or some other interfering lifestyle factor. But there is good news, however, which is that there is a particular machine that makes water infused with hydrogen ions that, when drunk, recreate the exact same effects of grounding without the need to actually be physically grounded to the earth. This makes it much easier to reap the same benefits of grounding if one has no access to the physical earth or a grounding mat throughout the day. If you want to learn more about this machine, like where to buy it and how it works, refer to the links in the description below. That is the fundamental carnal motivation that lies behind literally all bad self-destructive behaviors. See, once again, the intellectual move to make things very vague and reduce them to something very vague so that people have to agree ubiquitously with your opinion, or they're more compelled to. It's manipulation tactics. If this is a reason to call junk food an addiction, then all bad- That's not the reason. Once again, with your manipulated reductionism to make a posit or an argument that is also a straw man as a result of your reductionism and your intellectual manipulation to effectuate people's ubiquitous agreement with your opinion. With your logic, cocaine shouldn't be an addiction either or an addictive substance. With your logic, heroin addiction shouldn't be an addiction either, Matt. Why do you think heroin and cocaine are addictive? What makes them addictive, Matt? bag of Doritos, to procrastinating on a school assignment, to calling in- That is not the same- <laughs> In fact, if you want to get into some psychology, Matt, procrastination isn't simply indolence or laziness. It's actually, in many cases, in almost all cases, a fight or flight or fear response. To work when you're not really sick, to uh, robbing a bank or having an affair, all- This is pathetic. Wow. Horrible. Honestly makes me think about watching your show any further. If this is reason enough to justify classifying food as an addiction, then it's reason enough to justify all vice, all sin, all bad habits, all bad choices as addiction. False. Incorrect. Not all of them stimulate your dopamine receptors seven to eight times more than cocaine and actually cause deleterious effects perniciously and insidiously to human physiology. False. Is there some kind of mystical unseen force compelling you against your will to stuff a chocolate chip muffin into your face? Is there some sort of mystical unseen force that is compelling you to inject more heroin than your body needs whenever an addicted person injects heroin into their body? Once again, I iterate my question. What makes heroin and cocaine addictive? What makes cocaine and heroin addictions addictions, Matt? Because your entire logic here would discount heroin and cocaine as being addictive substances because people just need to control themselves. I don't understand what your logic here is. Well, I understand it. It's just wrong. The guy going back for his fourth helping at Golden Corral can't stop himself. He has no free will at all. The person going back to heroin to inject it into their veins has no free will. Of course they do, but they're addicted. What is wrong with you? <laughs> wow. Wow. I can't stop being someone who was born in 1986. Um, I can't stop obeying the law of gravity. Mm -hmm. These are all things I literally- Well, someone has free will to stop injecting the heroin needles into their arm. It's just discipline, Matt. It's just discipline. Does the Golden Corral buffet fall into this category for some people? Is it like gravity? Covered that. Is it an inevitability? Covered Is that. Thing that, they, that exerts control over them? So that- Covered that. Walking to the buffet, if you tried to talk to them, you wouldn't. They'd have this gl gl glossed, glazed look in their eyes, and it's like the zombie is walking towards. They... Yeah, the fluoride stare. Is that what you're talking about? The the stare that's colloquially deemed fluoride stare within this space. In many cases, I believe to be rightfully so. I see that look everywhere. A deer in headlights, empty vessels wandering through the world, waiting for an ideology to possess them, or some sort of hedonic pleasure. Like I don't know. Sugar and seed oils. Food addict can stop eating. He can- A heroin addict can stop injecting heroin. Just take some willpower and discipline. Healthier. He can put down the fork. He can put down the tray. Cocaine addict can put down that dollar bill. They just need hard work and discipline. It's their fault they got themselves into the mess, but they need help getting out. God, Matt. Wow. And put down the bag of chips. He can. He just doesn't want to. He's not forced to eat. That's not true. How many drug addicts do you hear about that have talked about for years they wanted to get off of it, but they couldn't? What is wrong with you, Matt? I mean, this is callous in the extreme. And now you're just being outright insensitive to people. People with actual problems, Matt. He just really, really wants to eat. And he does the thing that he really, really wants to do, even though he knows he shouldn't. Just like heroin and cocaine addicts.
because he is weak and he has very little self-control. Yep, just like cocaine and heroin addicts, apparently, according to Matt, according to Matt's logic, that can be extrapolated to those addictions as well, apparently. Because his logic insinuates that no addiction is actually a real addiction. It's not an addiction, it's just you lack discipline. There are elements of addiction that are disciplinary. I've covered that as well. It's not the entire characterization of addiction, however. Boy. The chief medical and clinical officer at something called the Eating Recovery Center is quoted as saying this. Quote, in my experience, some affected people find the term food addiction validating, empowering, and useful for their recovery. That's where people inappropriately extrapolate that phenomenon into their lives. They conceptualize it improperly. They do, in many cases, use it as an excuse. That is where I do understand your frustration, Matt, and your immediate dismissal, your callous dismissal of such a real, salient phenomenon. I do understand it, and does not mean it is grounded in truth, just because other people use it irresponsibly and use it as a scapegoat. Anyway, those are actual weak-minded people. This is where the overly treacly and compassionate side ruins actual real phenomenon and makes it look bad for actual food addicts. It makes actual food addicts look bad. It makes people like Matt Walsh look at all food addicts, actual food addicts, like they're just undisciplined, gluttonous, unsophisticated, primitive barbarians when it comes to food. That's their fault. But it's also Matt's for not being objective. And that is why food addiction is today canceled. I wish it were, but it's not. It's very real. It's still out there. And in fact, Matt, this kind of demagoguery, really, this kind of monologue is saddening. It's disappointing. And it perpetuates this feeling of guilt that people have when they actually have an addiction. If you want people to get off of an addiction, you don't guilt them, you don't denigrate them, and in some cases, vituperate them callously like you do. That's not what you do. But anyway, that's it. Looks like it. Just saddening. I really wished that Matt would have done better. Join me next time when we critique someone else. Buy my book, Contraindicated, if you haven't already. Link is in the description below. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. Like it. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about this. If you want me to react to more videos, please email me any videos you want me to react to. My email is down below as well in the description. And with that being said, I will see you next time.